Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm doing a tutorial on game design documentation. This video is going to be covering uh, just the start of a project and the game design uh, the game design documentation writing process. We're well, not writing process, but basically showing you what I write for a game design document. So when you set out to create a game in Unity, uh, something that helps me, and you don't necessarily have to do this, but it, uh, it's used in the industry and it helps me a lot, is you want to write down a game design documentation which outlays everything that's going to be in the game, how the game works, and basically the nitty gritty of everything in the game. And the reason you do this is because there's a thing called feature creep where if you don't outline everything, you just keep adding things and adding things. And before you know it, you're just working on feature after feature and then you're never getting anywhere. So it's good to have this to uh, clearly define what you want in the game and what you intend to create. So this is the first video in that series where I am going to be creating a, game, a tabletop game for the Microsoft HoloLens. Uh, if you don't know what the HoloLens is, uh, go ahead and YouTube it. It's a really, really fantastic augmented reality headset that I am fascinated with just purely for this game that I want to make for it. And another one. I have another idea for a game that I want to create. Uh, both are pretty um, lengthy goals, but I feel like with a decent amount of work, I could get a pretty decent prototype, maybe get funding for it. So the first game is Tabletop Wars, and this is going off of the old Advanced Wars game or Advanced Wars game. I love those games with a passion. So I want to create a augmented reality version of this game that you play on the tabletop, similar to um, like think Star Wars, one of those Star Wars, wherever they played that that hologram game, hologram chess game was weird. Awesome. Loved it. Same concept. So going over to GDD, it's basically writing out everything that's in the game. So right here you can see I'm on story, which is my first little peg. And this is just a very rough, rough, like, explanation of what I intend the story to be, you know, how, how the levels are going to be laid out uh, very roughly, you know, what types of levels there will be. Um, and then down here you can have features. I didn't really go too in-depth with that one. But it's turn-based combat, which is the way that the game works. And then it's rock, paper, scissors, you know, uh... One unit counters another one, but not more than one, you know. Um, the controls, I'm designing two types of controls. The first one is going to be focused on PC because I don't know when the HoloLens is going to be going to be released, but I intend to make it easily trans, like make the controls easily transitionable to the HoloLens. So that's what that section's for. And here's where you, where I start breaking into the really important things. This is the unit section, so you can see that I, I um, explain here that each unit has a certain amount of moves, and then I break down the ground units, how much they cost, are they close range, are they combat, are they, are they close range or are they ranged combat, um, do they have a direct counter to them, do they counter something directly, do they have any special abilities, uh, stuff like that, and I go down here and I do the same thing for tiles. So in my game, there's defensive ratings for each tile in the game. So, you know, roads are level one. They're not very, they don't provide any cover. And then planes provide some, yada, yada, et cetera, et cetera. And then down here, we explain the way that fuel is going to work in the game. Ammunition is going to work. Um, fog of war, if we get to that point. Um, movement. And then multiplayer. I just left it as a section. Didn't go too in-depth with it because... You know, that's down the road. So this is a game design documentation that I just, I wanted to get out there and this video really just wanted to serve a purpose to give everybody a heads up that uh, I'm going to be doing this in Unity. I'm going to take this game. I'm going to set it up, release it. It's going to be great. So let's go ahead and let's jump into Unity, shall we? All right, so we're right here at the startup. We're going to go ahead and create a new Unity project. We're going to call this um, Tabletop uh, Wars. We're going to pick the... We're going to pick where it goes. All right, we're just going to create the project real quick. So this is going to be a short and sweet video. I'm just going to 
lay out real quick the way that I like to set up my project uh, so that I can work unhindered. Because this is really like the most boring process of of creating a project. Because you have to make sure you have a stable foundation before you can um, really start developing a game. I'm going to create a folder. This one's going to be called resources and just going to be holding anything that I use in the game, such as art assets, um, stuff like that. So we're going to create the scene folder, which is going to hold all of our scene files. We're going to save the scene into scenes and we're just going to name it uh, we're going to name it test scene just because I like having a scene where I can test where it's just, you know, it doesn't matter if you break it kind of thing. Uh, let's create another folder. We're going to name this one prefabs. This is going to hold over our prefabs that we create in the game. I think that's all I need for now. Oh, no, I need one more. One more folder. This is a big one. Scripts. And then we're going to actually create a subfolder, and that one is called Managers. Um, and now I'm going to start working on the Manager system. So I'm going to create an empty game object. I'm going to call it Managers. I'm going to create another one. This one's going to be uh, Game State Manager. create another one let's call this one we're gonna call this one level manager player manager whoops I didn't mean to copy that Initialization manager. I'm drawing a blank on all the the other ones I need right now, but that's okay. We'll we'll come back in and add them add them later. Uh, the point that what I'm doing here is I I like to have managers that manage certain aspects of my game so they're easy to find, easy to edit, and it's not the you know it's not the most refined system that I have yet. So we're going to let's go over here and create C sharp script and. We're going to call this master manager. Okay, let's create another one. This one's going to be called game state manager. Level, level manager. Player manager. Initialization manager. Okay, now let's drag the. Oh, I have put a space in there. Well, we're going to change that. Let's, uh, so let's just go ahead and drag these onto their proper manager. Initialization. Cannot add script. I think it's because maybe they change it so that scripts just can't have a space like at all anymore. It doesn't even let you do it because that was angry. That one was really angry. Let's level manager. Now we need the master. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to actually use the master, but that's fine. No. No, actually, I will use the manager or the master. Let's open Visual Studio. Fix this. No, we're going to delete that script. We're going to call it management. Okay. <laughs> Remove. All right, we're, we're going to change the name of that script to...
Go over here, dickhead. Yeah, sure. Why are you over there? Go over here. No. No. Snap in here. Oh, why are you doing this to me? Why won't you just... Thank you. Okay, let's do this correctly this time. And I'm going to copy this. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, okay, that's very good, it works. Okay, and let's, I'm basically copying what, uh, my friend, I can't take credit for this, not at all, my friend wrote the code for this, and I use it because it's awesome. He's much better at designing frameworks than I am. And this one's actually really outdated, he's gonna be mad at me. For using this, it's gonna. He's gonna be mad. He's gonna. Be, I can't believe you're using that two-year outdated framework. But I can't just can't just give the masses his current work. What do you think I am? Some sort of madman? No, no, sir. No, sir. Okay. Okay. Now let's define the game objects. So what we have is. Nope. We don't need that. Game. We got a game state manager. It really bothers me. I'm going to do member variables. Ah, nah. We'll do a game state manager. It's fine. Whatever. Uh, we have a level manager. We have a player manager. Initialization F4. Initialization manager. Okay. Alright, alright, that looks good. Now let's just pop over here to manager. We're actually going to change the name of this to management. Because that's what he has it. Alright, now. You need to do this. Level, player, initialization. I does seem to be up here. If we're being alphabetical. And yep. Works for me. Alright. So that sets up uh I just wanted to do that because it just makes it easier for the next time that I come to work. Okay, so now that I've got everything named properly and everything set, we need to create the functions that are going to retrieve the managers. So let's do create some public functions here. Um, it's going to be of the type of game state manager. Get game. Alright, so that's what it's going to do. It's going to root all these functions are going to do. It are, uh, oh, whoops. Dot get component game state manager. So these functions are going to return the scripts that are, um, it's going to return the scripts that are attached to the public variables that I've, um, plugged in to management so and this is where it comes from where i'm saying that this is outdated because there is a much better way to do this but for right now this works perfectly fine let's change the names here
Oops. Manager. It should be right. Yeah, that's correct. I have, fortunately, I only have four of these. As you're developing a game, this list gets pretty, pretty long. Um, the next one is initialization manager. Copy that. Initialization manager, initialization manager. Take the eye off. There we go. Three, I need one more. Let's see, we have game state level, initialization, and player. Put it there, get rid of the extra D, or R. Okay. Let's see, two, three, four, yeah, that should be right. Now, the purpose of setting this up is, now that I actually have it set up, I can show you. On any script in the game, you can just type in management.get. Oh, you could type management.instance.get. Get, get initialization manager, for, for instance. What does this do? Well, it basically just uh, it references the script that is currently running on the management component. Um, so it's just a really, really useful tool, and it's there's better ways in the world, of course, but for what we're trying to do, it works, you know. And I like things that work. It's probably it, it's a really it's just really cool. But yeah, this is my short, short, short video explaining you know just going into gdds a little bit i just wanted to lay that out and um set the set the pillars for what i'm going to be designing and creating um but yeah check out the rest of the series uh as it come out and thanks for watching guys peace